guess that's approximately size of the screen I want to share. So <clears throat> good morning and welcome everyone. My name is Juho Lehtonen. Uh, I'm speaking at Helsinki in Finland. I work at CSC IT Center for Science as a software developer. And today we are going to continue uh, with uh, branching and merging. So yesterday we went through the basics here, uh, staging area and uh, undoing things with Git. And today we will continue with branching for to get to utilize the Git properties of doing different things simultaneously, uh, working on different features, and uh, many people working simultaneously on, on the same project. And that leads us to a conflict resolutions uh, because uh, working with different branches and merging them to back together often causes some conflicts. And we will also learn that they are nothing to be afraid of. And, and we will learn how to uh, also how to try to avoid conflicts. And after that, we start uh, slowly moving to online with version control. So far, everything has been local. But uh, today, we will see how to share repositories online and how also how to fetch repositories uh, from remote repositories, different web services like GitHub. And we also see that it works as a backup for our project code. And last thing today will be inspecting history of a project in case when a, we find a bug or error in our code, we learn about the tools that we can use to trace the, when was the error in our code introduced and, and find how to locate it and get more information about about the commit that causes some failure in our in our program or software. And I guess that's all about today. We will try to make breaks uh, once in an hour. And then at the day, we will summarize and try to have a short moment for uh, questions and, and and free discussion. Okay, did I miss anything? Well, uh, then uh, I'll let Diana to start with branching and merging. Diana, please, you can Thanks take you the screen. Are. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, looking good. Okay, great. Hopefully, yeah, size is good. Everyone is happy. So, uh, good. okay, great. So I am, uh, I am uh, Diana Yushan. I am working with Code Refinery since, well, officially since um, uh, last fall, but I've been a little bit involved uh, before that. And, uh, and I am also working as an application expert for uh, SNEEP UPMA. So I'm now sitting in Uppsala. We are having great weather here. It's really nice to have this uh, while teaching. So, uh, so today I am going to talk about uh, branching and merging and then how we can resolve conflicts. And then as you Yuho mentioned, he's going to take over the online um, repos after this. So we are going to have a breakout uh, exercise, breakout room exercise in the middle of these uh, lessons, but this is going to come a little bit in 10 minutes or so. 
So uh, in this lesson, we are going to learn how you and, uh, and your team can work on multiple features in parallel, how to combine changes of parallel lines of work, basically merging, and how you can reference to a point in the history of a repo like a software version. So um, uh, why do we actually need branches in our work? So yesterday you learned how to track the guacamole recipe using Git. And the, the repository only had uh, one branch and the commits were done uh, one after another. Uh, it's schematically represented here. So for, we started with an initial commit and then we added a new commit which has them one as the parent. And then we moved on uh, further and added uh, uh, new uh, commits. So, uh, so this, uh, this logical line of, uh, of uh, commits is called a uh, branch. And uh, the name of the branch that we used the last time we, uh, was the master, but of course, I mean, this can be configured to be called something else. It's really just, uh, just a name. And uh, the, head, the head is like a pointer that will always point, that will point to, uh, to the, the latest commit of the branch that we are on and in this case, the master branch. So um, <clears throat> the question is, what if we want to introduce new features to our code? Um, and uh, in analogy, so let's say that we have this uh, octopus and we want to see how it would look, for example, either with uh, glasses or maybe a hat. So this is like similarly like testing out new, well, introducing new features in, uh, <clears throat> in the code, but uh, that we may be uh, unsure about, or maybe they are too complex that we want to simply try things out before having them in the master branch. So um, whenever whenever we do want to introduce a feature, I would actually always recommend that uh, that you create a branch and uh, and uh, implement uh, the features there. And then after a while, if uh, if the the, the feature is proven to be useful if it uh, works as uh, as it should. Then uh, then they can be merged. Uh, that it, then it can be merged together in the in the master branch, as represented here by <clears throat> by this octopus, which has actually two new features: the hat and uh, and the glasses. So uh, the the strength of version control and uh, and Git is that it allows you to uh, isolate the uh, different, uh, different lines of work. And, uh, and these lines of work can be later merged into a combined version that contains all the changes that you uh, want uh, to keep. So um, this is another schematic illustration of, um, of, a, um, of the commits of a repository that has uh, different branches. So these uh, purple branches, um, so the purple branch, sorry, with the, the, the C commits. So um, uh, we have, um, we initially had a, uh, a C1 a commit um, followed by a C2 commit that had C1 as, uh, as a parent. But then at uh, this point in time, the, the uh, C2 um, or well, the, the, the purple branch has been, um, um, has been uh, branched into uh, two branches, the, the purple one, and then the, this salmon pinkish uh, color, the B uh, branch. So um, um, uh, C2 is uh, called a uh, branching point in, uh, in this case. And, uh, and for example, the M21, the M2 commit, who is uh, merging the, the B3 commit and uh, the C41 is called a merging point. So um, the, um, the main line of de development of a repository is often called the master, but as I said before, it's just a convention in, and you can really rename it to something that you find more uh, useful for your uh, repository. What, uh, what is important is the, that the commits on a particular branch to form a narrative. So they have some connection. You have some connection from one uh, um, or some uh, line of thought from one commit to another. So for example, you may have a branch for implementing the Python interface to your code if you find it useful or you may, or you may have a branch for fixing a bug in, in, uh, in an algorithm like for example, the matrix inversion algorithm or, 
or any linear algebra you may have in linear algebra you may have in the code. So, um, so this is just like a short uh, motivation for why branches are useful. And in um, in the following, I am going to move to my terminal window, and uh, we are going to see actually how we can create uh, these uh, branches in uh, practice. So, um, so if you don't have your terminal uh, window ready now, it's a good time to bring that up. And we are going to use the directory of the guacamole recipe we used uh, yesterday. So it's a good idea to move into that uh, directory. So I will just wait a couple of seconds until all of you can do that. Okay, so now I, I am in the, I am already in the recipe directory that I have used uh, um, yesterday and it's a, it's a git repository. You see here I have all the, all the history of my commits in this directory git, which is in, in, the, local, uh, in the local directory. So um, uh, as we will see later on, it's uh, very useful if we can uh, define a, a useful alias at this point. It's going to uh, allow us to, to view the branches easier. So uh, please type along with me. So I'm going to type git config. Uh, and uh, whenever we use git config, it's, uh, it's um, um, going to add these uh, new configurations that I uh, uh, that I have in the git config file. So uh, git config dash dash global. So this is going to set the global setting uh, on my um, or configuration on my uh, local computer. And then uh, alias dot graph. So I'm going to have an alias which is called graph. And uh, what this alias should uh, refer to is, sorry, log dash dash all. So it's going to show me a history basically. And then some other helpful options here, decorate and one line. And one line you may recognize from uh, last time, basically it's going to show the history but uh, of the commits, but only using one line for each commit. And then we type enter. So then uh, from now on, instead of having to type git and log dash dash all and so on, all I have to do is to type git graph. So I'm going to do that to show you how it looks like. So right now it's very similar to just uh, typing git uh, dash dash, git, sorry, git log dash dash one line, but it's going to, uh, you will uh, see why it's helpful a little bit uh, um, later today. So uh, one may see that I have done, uh, let's see, six commits yesterday in this local repository. You may have more or less commits depending on uh, the changes that you have implemented yesterday. And then I can see a, a short hash um, ID of the commits. I also see that the branch I am on is the master branch. In, uh, in my case, and then the head is pointing to this latest commit of the branch I am on the, the master branch. Okay, another, uh, another way um, um, that uh, we can see uh, which are the branches that we have in a uh, repository is by typing the git branch command. And then in this particular case, because we only work with one branch, I only have this master branch. And then this asterisk or star, it's pointing to the branch I am on. And again, this is the master branch. So um, uh, what you should remember is that git branch, just typing git branch does not create new branches. It's, going to, it's only going to list the branches that uh, we have in a uh, repository. So how do we create a uh, new branch? So uh, the command for it is git branch. And let's say I want to call a, uh, a, uh, I want to create a branch which I call experiment. I just want to experiment a little bit with my recipe. 
And then uh, what I should uh, also write is from which branch should this experiment branch be created? And in this case, the master branch, it's the only one we have. So of course, this is very obvious. So um, um, there is actually no verbose when one is typing. This is a bit unfortunate of Git, but what I will do again is I'm going to type again Git branch to see that uh, this uh, new branch has been created. So yeah, I am still on the master branch, uh, but I also have this additional experiment branch which has been uh, created. So um, in order to switch to the experiment branch, what I need to do is to, uh, to type git checkout experiment. Uh, and that is going to switch to that branch or a newer command is git switch. And those of you that are confused uh, by uh, git uh, checkout, I think it's, it, you may find it useful to use the git switch uh, command instead. As uh, checkout uh, does behave very differently depending on the context you, as you, you are uh, using it with. So git switch experiment. And then I get this uh, prompt saying that I have switched now to, git has now switched to the branch uh, experiment. Okay. Uh, so uh, I am going to type git status. And I see that I am on uh, the branch experiment. My, uh, my uh, working tree is clean. I have not added anything. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, there is nothing uh, to, uh, to commit. So um, um, is everything going okay? Are you uh, following along? So one question that I can relay from Hackenby mm -hmm. is, so, or maybe a bit far paraphrasing, is there anything special about the branch master? And related question, um, how about master versus main? Because yeah. some participants may have main as a default also. Yeah. We will later see on GitHub often the default yes. branch is called main. Yes, very good questions. And uh, uh, there is nothing special about the master branch. It's really, you should just uh, treat it as a, uh, as a uh, any other branch. Uh, it's just that when you are coding, uh, when you are developing the code, then it's it's nice to have one uh, uh, tree that you are always referring to, just to make sure that you are keeping all your uh, all your development in uh, one place. That you have all all features you are interested in in uh, in uh, in one uh, branch. But uh, other than that, from the point of view of Git, there is nothing particular about uh, about this branch. And then uh, regarding main, so um, uh, the default for the online repos is main for the main uh, branch. And also uh, depending on the operating system that you are using, the local branch may be called main. And I am not sure if it's actually the case in Windows. And also it may depend a little bit on the version of Git that you are using. So if, if you see that uh, your, uh, your branch is called something else, then, uh, then don't, uh, you, you do not have to worry about that. So there are just some different conventions. Uh, it's just different ways the, the, um, the Git uh, is configured on different operating systems or versions. I hope this is clear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I see one point here that uh, that the git switch command did not work. And uh, yes, I mean it's uh, uh, the git switch is a, uh, um, a command that has been introduced in a in a fairly recent version of git. I don't remember which one, but if git switch does not work, then you should stick to git uh, checkout. So just git checkout and the branch name if you want to switch to that instead of git switch uh, branch name. So I hope this is um, this is clear. And there are some questions about deleting branches. We are going to go to that later on. So uh, okay. So now uh, let's get back to uh, to the terminal. So let's say that I want to experiment, as I said, with this recipe, and then I want to see, for example, if cilantro would work with guacamole. Actually, I have never tried, but uh, it'd be fun to do. So then I'm going to add uh, at the top of this document. And it would be really good if you do the same thing. Otherwise, we may end up with uh, some unwanted conflicts, which we are only going to cover after the break. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of cilantro at the very top of this uh, ingredients file. 
and I'm using Vim, but you can use whatever uh, favorite editor that you have. It's really up to you. And I'm going to, so if I type git status, then, oh, sorry. Then I see that I have this uh, modified uh, uh, file in my working directory, which has not been staged. So I should uh, stage this file and maybe I should just move my window a bit so that you can see better. Sorry, I think it's just a bit annoying if the bottom is in the way. Okay, so now I see that the, now the ingredients file is staged so I can uh, commit this and I do it uh, with the command git commit dash and which is the commit message and I'm going to say that let's try some let's just try some cilantro okay so then uh, if I now type uh, git graph then I see that I have this uh, new commit in the experiment graph uh, in the experiment branch um, uh, with the description that uh, uh, let us try some cilantro. So let's say I change my mind and I actually want to decrease this amount uh, to one tablespoon only. This is really a matter of preference, but it's good that we can just change things if we find out that they may not be appropriate. And then again, I, I have modified the file. I'm going to stage it again, and then I'm going to commit it and let's say reduce the amount of cilantro. Okay. And then again, let's, I'm going to really use the graph command a lot today, but you see now that I have now a new commit still in the experiment branch. Okay. So. Can I interrupt again? for a moment? Yes. Uh, just we have a question to everybody in the can be at the at the bottom. There is a there is a vote. We would like to know how the pace is going. Is it too mm -hmm. fast? Is it good pace? Is it too slow? Uh, so please have a look at the bottom of the can be document and let us know. Thanks. Okay. Great idea. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I am now going to switch to the browser window again. And uh, what, uh, now that we have learned how to create a new branch, you are going to practice a little bit uh, on your own on creating a branch. So uh, uh, you have 15 minutes for this. So uh, you have uh, all, the, uh, uh, all the exercises or like, the exercise explained, uh, explained here. I'm going to paste this link in the hack and or maybe one of my colleagues can do that. So uh, um, you will have to, uh, to uh, um, basically create a couple of, uh, of uh, branches and some commits. And um, yes, sorry, this exercise, I got a bit confused. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's this exercise. And, uh, and uh, just uh, one final point before, uh, before going that, I want to refer a little bit to the different meanings of uh, checkout. So, uh, so as I said, uh, you uh, may use uh, the git checkout command in order to uh, switch to a branch. And in that case, the argument should be the branch name that you want to use. But then as, uh, as we remember from, uh, from yesterday, you can also, um, uh, uh, undo changes in your uh, working tree. So for example, you can use git checkout with a hash ID, and that's going to uh, bring all the changes in the working tree to, or what, it's going to update all the files in the working tree to the version that has been in the particular commit with uh, the hash ID um, hash. Or, uh, or you may, uh, for example, update them uh, with respect to a path that you have, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 
so if you just use it, uh, uh, if you just use the git uh, checkout with the argument either pass or file, then uh, it's going to undo all uh, all your uh, unstaged um, uh, modifications. So you will uh, uh, get back to to the the state that was in your uh, latest commit. So it's a bit uh, confusing. Uh, to have these uh, these different uh, um, actions depending uh, on the context, and that is why uh, from version two twenty three, uh, Git has also introduced uh, this uh, alternative command, which is Git's uh, switch uh, branch name, and uh, and also the Git restore path file, which basically does exactly the same as Git checkout uh, um, path or file. So depending what you want uh, as an argument. And uh, so uh, now it's a good time that we open the breakout rooms. And as I said, we are going to have 15 minutes for this exercise. One thing before uh, you go in, please stop just before merge branches as we are going to do this uh, back in the main room. So what should we end up, like at the end of the exercise, what mm -hmm. should we have? We should have, um, if you scroll a little bit up, we want to yes. have these three branches. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. In the, yes. After that, uh, you are going to have the main branch uh, or the master branch, and then you are going to have uh, two branches: the experiment and the less salt one. And another thing that we want to have is that everybody has the Git graph alias defined because this is really useful then yes, for the yes. for the following. Mm -hmm. And so, fifteen minutes. Also, exercise leads. Please let us know through HackMD how it is going, but I also know it's a lot to juggle at the same time. And we will open the breakout rooms and we'll be back uh, 50 minutes past the hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um... I'm going to ba go back to my terminal and I will also be doing this exercise. So, um, I will just recap the exercise. So, uh, what I am going to do is to create new branches and I'm going to make uh, new commits to each branch. And uh, I, uh, I am going to create this uh, branch called uh, less salt. And uh, I am going to reduce the amount of salt in that. And then I will commit uh, uh, the changes that I have uh, made uh, in, uh, uh, to the files. And, uh, and then we will see that we, we are going to have uh, three branches in that case, the, the master branch and then the experiment one, which we have already created, and then the less sort one. Okay, but uh, let's go to the terminal. So um, uh, let's see, I'm going to type git branch again, and then I see that uh, I have the master branch and the experiment one, uh, where I have recently done two commits. And uh, because I want to create a new branch, uh, but uh, from the master one, then I actually have to switch uh, to that uh, branch. So again, you can either type git checkout uh, and uh, uh, the name of the branch, or you can uh, use the command git uh, switch master. They are, uh, they are equivalent. And okay, now I am on the master branch and I will create the, the branch, um, less salt and I will follow the steps in the in the web so that uh, you will have the same uh, um, repository after doing this exercise so uh, so basically this creates the new less salt uh, branch from master okay and uh, git branch will show me now all the branches that I have. I am on the master branch. It's, uh, it's uh, highlighted in green and also has this asterisk star, if you want to call it, uh, uh, just uh, uh, next to it. And then these two new, uh, so this, sorry, these um, other branches, the experiment and the newly created less salt branch. 
Okay, so um, I'm going to switch to the less salt branch and I'm going to do some uh, experimenting there. So git checkout or git switch less salt. Okay, now I am back to, uh, now I am uh, in the git, uh, sorry, in the branch less salt. And it's always good, well, if you're unsure, you can always type git branch and see which uh, branch you are in. Uh, and this is especially helpful if you have not uh, just recently created this branch. Maybe you've done some work and you just uh, lost track on which branch you are in. Always, always check, check this, especially before doing commits. Uh, okay, I, and then I'm going to edit the ingredients file. And then I'm going to inspect them and then decide that two teaspoons of salt is actually way too much. And I am going to reduce it to one. Maybe even one is a bit a lot, but okay, we'll keep it to one. And uh, and uh, one, so uh, one tablespoon, good. And uh, if I type git status now, and this may be a bit repeating, but uh, especially for those that are new, I think it's helpful to, to uh, see the commands we learned yesterday a bit more. So I see that I have this modified ingredients file in my working directory. And uh, Git is also telling me, well, refreshing me a bit that I can use uh, um, Git add to uh, stage this file. Or if I want to undo the changes that, uh, that I have done in the ingredients file, then I can use the Git restore um, command together with file, which is ingredients in this case. So, uh, but I am happy with this modification of the ingredients file. So I'm going to stage it using the git add command. And then I am going to commit it. I'm going to commit this modification and I am going to edit the commit message. And I'm going to call it reduce the amount of, snack, uh, amount of salt. So let's see how this looks like. Git graph. What I see is that all commits from yesterday, I, I see the last two commits that I had done to the experiment branch, and then the very newest commit uh, on the less salt branch. And this is also where the head is pointing to. So I will just repeat myself, head is always pointing to the latest commit of the branch that you are on. And then in this case, it's this is the commit with this hash ID. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I am now going to switch to the branch master. So git checkout master or git switch master. And uh, I will type git branch. So let's see that all I can see that I am indeed on the master branch and I have those two uh, 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 branches that I have been experimenting with. So I, um, I realized uh, that uh, I have actually not added any readme file uh, to my repository and it's always good. It's always like good practice to have readme files of your repository so that you know what, uh, what um, uh, what your intentions with this repository is. Why, why do you actually want to uh, have it in the uh, first place? So always include the readme file for, uh, for yourself, but also for others that, uh, that may be using your repository. And this is, will become even more important when you share repositories online. So skipping a bit ahead here. So I have a readme file and then let's see uh, what uh, should I say that this is. Um, um, so uh, repository, I am going to say that this is a repository for a um, guacamole recipe. And then so the title should not go. 
And then I'm going to also give some uh, uh, sorry, some description on, uh, on what is the purpose of this re uh, repository. So uh, using this as an example to teach Git, the use of Git. Oh, it's too much use, so let's see using this example to teach it, okay? And then, uh, so I will just start with this. Maybe I am going to add some more uh, uh, instructions or well, details to this uh, readme file, but for the moment, it, this is a good start. And I am going to uh, type git status to see what have I changed. So I have this untracked file readme, which I have just created. So untracked file means that Git has no idea about this file. So if I want to perform any operations on this file, Git will not, will, uh, is going to complain and say that I, I, uh, I do not know, I, I have not tracked this file. So actually we may just, uh, um, uh, we are going to, uh, to uh, start tracking this file by, uh, um, by uh, using the git add command, git add readme, and this is going to stage this file. And the moment uh, that the file is staged, then it also means that it is going to be tracked. So I will just type git status again. And then you see that now this is shown in green, at least on, uh, on my uh, terminal. That uh, means that the file is uh, modified and staged. So now I want to also commit these uh, uh, changes to the file. And I am going to say that I have drafted a readme file, drafted a readme file. And uh, you may see that I have this extension and D is just because I have used the markdown when I have uh, um, edited the file, but it can be just plain text as well. It's just that it looks nicer uh, if I open it in a browser, if I use mark, uh, Markdown. And also Git knows about Markdown, so it's going to show uh, very nicely on the Git pages as well. Okay, and uh, if I now type Git graph, I see that uh, I have now a new commit in the master branch, uh, which, uh, which uh, is for this uh, drafting of the readme file. So you may see that here, this point here is actually um, a uh, branching point. It's when the, the less sort and the master branch have diverged. So I have two different commits. So now the master branch and the less sort uh, uh, branch are uh, different. So, uh, um, This is, uh, this is it for the exercise. So uh, we are just uh, going to wait until uh, everyone else from the breakout rooms is done. And we are going to uh, continue with the merging of branches in just a couple of minutes. So let's see how uh, is in the hack MD. So uh, there is one question, what is the difference between the head and the working tree? So the working tree will always refer to your, well, they, the, the state that your local, um, that your working directory is, it, is in, uh, while the head is always pointing to a commit. So all, 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 uh, all committed changes to your uh, directory. But uh, the head knows um, what? The head does not care uh, in, uh, uh, if, uh, well, in which state your working directory is in. I hope that's clear and I have not been confusing it even more. So now everybody's back. We have uh, 10 more minutes of instruction and then at 10 o'clock Stockholm time, we will take a break. Okay, great. So everyone is back, right? Right. Okay, so uh, welcome back everyone. Uh, there are some uh, questions, some really nice questions in uh, in the HackMD, uh, which I uh, thought I would bring uh, up. So, um, um, 
so uh, one of them is what is the working tree so the working tree is um is basically uh the the um, the directory in which uh, i am uh, working in this case the the recipe directory without uh, without kids so i uh, all the contents uh, of this uh, of this uh, particular um, um, directory is my working tree and i can have uh, subdirectories and so on and uh, uh, yeah so then i may refer to that as a oh no sorry i am mixing things up maybe Rather than I think I am mixing this up with maybe the person was referring as the 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 branches all of the branches of a repository. So the question was about the head versus working tree, or so what is the definition of the working tree? It's a bit uh, confusing because I was thinking as the working directory, but uh, but uh, maybe he was uh, meaning uh, the the. Tree or so that's that's how it's I understand it. So I, I understand working tree as the thing that I have, see right now in my folder, mm -hmm. which okay. is some checked out version which may or may not have modifications. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, then uh, then we understood the right thing, uh, the same thing. Okay, uh, the second question is what is the difference between the head and the working tree? So um, uh, so the head. Let's uh, let me type git graph first. The head is uh, only referring to uh, committed modifications, so it's only going to refer to commits. Uh, uh, what uh, the latest commit of uh, of uh, the um, branch that uh, that you are in. So it's uh, uh, only about uh, the git repo. It has no. Um, um, uh, it's a so it's just a, like a a snapshot, the latest snapshot of your uh, work commit uh, of your working directory, but uh, nothing else. Sorry, maybe this was a bit unclear. Okay, I will take just uh, one question and we can uh, move to uh, merging branches. So um, if you want, um, uh, uh, if you want uh, to uh, see some information on uh, a particular commit, then you can just type the git uh, show uh, and uh, let's say uh, this particular uh, commit. And then you may also see uh, uh, the, um, the branch that uh, that commit uh, um, belongs to and also what has been uh, introduced in that uh, particular uh, uh, commit, which files have been modified and exactly what are, what are the modifications that have been done. So, uh, we are going to continue now with, uh, with uh, merging branches. So, uh, let's see. Uh, Again, which uh, branches we have, the experiment, less salt and must run. And let's assume that uh, we are uh, happy with, uh, with the cilantro experiment that we have done uh, previously, and we want to, to merge uh, this into the, master, uh, into the master branch. So um, I'm going to uh, then uh, um, I am on the master branch. Good. So uh, one should always be on the on the branch that uh, you want to merge into. So if I want to merge into the master branch, then I, I first have to switch to this uh, branch if I'm not there already. And um, and then I am going to. Oh, sorry. I'm going to type git merge. And then the name of the branch that I want to merge, and that is experiment. Hit merge experiment. And then I'm going to be prompted with, uh, with um, 
uh, this uh, file which uh, contains the, the commit uh, messages. And I'm going to add here, um, happy with the cilantro experiment. So just some extra description of, uh, of the commit. Okay. So, um, and sorry um, for interrupting. Yeah. And sorry if it was mentioned, but uh, if people got a bit lost or if they have a working tree that looks very, very different, um, they, there is also in the instruction material, we have this way that you can get the same version that you have of, from GitHub directly. Should I also in, in our lesson material at the beginning of merging, maybe if you can open it uh, here. So yes. if if some somebody got stuck, you could you could uh, you could do these steps, and then you get really the same version that uh, Diana has. And sorry if this was said. I'm just also jumping between Windows as everybody else. Okay, so now I'm going to type a git branch again, and then I see that. Uh, I have the three branches. And if I also add the option dash dash uh, merged, then I may see uh, which are the branches that have been merged uh, into the master branch. So it, this tells me that experiment has now been branched into the master one. And this is even more obvious if I, uh, sorry, if I type the git graph. If I use the git graph command, so I see that so the experiment branch has now been merged into the master one. So I uh, am going to do now the same with the less uh, sort one. So yeah, I am on master, so I'm going to use again git merge less sort. And I'm just going to uh, write a message for this uh, uh, merge. So um, <clears throat> let's view now this uh, ingredients uh, file uh, that we had um, that we have been changing during this commit. What, uh, what we can see is that uh, Git has automatically changed the, the, the contents of uh, these, uh, these files during the, the merging. So the, the, cilantro, the cilantro has been added uh, um, automatically to, uh, uh, sorry, it has, uh, the amount of the cilantro has been changed uh, uh, automatically into, uh, um, Um, so the, the changes to the cilantro and the salt content were incorporated automatically when, uh, when we uh, merged uh, these uh, branches. And also because there were no conflicts between uh, these uh, branches, then Git has actually performed these merges automatically. And um, um, whenever also, whenever we are merging, Two branches, as we can also see here, then uh, Git is going to uh, create a uh, a new uh, commit. So when we merge here, the last sort and uh, and uh, uh, and the master branch uh, here, then we have uh, this new commit uh, with the hash uh, D44 and so on. So, uh, so now that uh, we are happy with uh, uh, with the, the, so now that we have merged, sorry, the these uh, branches, we can um, we can safely remove them, and uh, the way uh, we can do that is uh, by uh, typing git branch dash d and the small d experiment. So this is going to remove this branch experiment. And 
um, the dash D option is only going to work with, uh, with branches that have been merged already. If you want to delete a branch which has not been merged, say that you have done, uh, uh, you have tried out something, some features, but they have not uh, uh, worked so well, then you should use the dash capital D option. Okay, I can uh, also remove the other branch, the less sort one. And then if I now type git branch, I see that the only, um, the only uh, branch that I am left with is the master one. But what about the history of, uh, of all these uh, branches, the commits uh, that uh, we have uh, performed? I can still have them. So if I type git graph, I can, I can, uh, I can still see the commits of these uh, previous uh, branches. So I can always go back in time or I can, uh, I can uh, see um, what uh, has been uh, changed, for example, in a particular uh, commit. So if I introduce the bug or something, or I, I just want to revisit uh, some of the files and I can, uh, I can uh, um, switch to that uh, version. So um, I'm going to do very quickly one, uh, one exercise if you just need one minute uh, in order to show what a fast forward uh, merge is. And uh, you do not uh, need to type along for, uh, for this one. Uh, I am uh, going to uh, create a new branch. From the master branch, I'm going to uh, switch to it. And I am going to um, edit this freebie file. Stage it and commit it. And I am going to switch back to the master branch. And then I, uh, I am going to uh, um, merge these two branches. So uh, maybe I should show the way the branches look now. So git graph. So I see this new branch here from the master one and then git merge quick test. Okay, and um, what we see in, uh, in the uh, message is that Git has performed a fast forward of, uh, of the quick test branch into the merge one. So what, the, what does uh, that mean? So I will bring up the Git, sorry. So what I can see is actually the head, so the pointer, so <clears throat> uh, uh, of the of the master branch has been moved forward in time from the version that we had previously to the most recent one, and this uh, fast forward um, uh, fast forward committing is always done when uh, when there are no new modifications to the uh, uh, to the uh, branch that we are uh, merging into. And, all, and so basically means that all the, the commits that were done in a quick test were just, uh, were just uh, added to the, to the master one. 
And uh, one, uh, one important uh, uh, thing to uh, um, notice as well, uh, in contrast to with the merge that was done before, is that when we have a fast merging, there is not a, uh, uh, there is not uh, going to be, so there is not going to be a new commit. So we still have the same, uh, uh, the same uh, commit that we had uh, previously on the branch. So, but then this again uh, will uh, only be uh, uh, done if there are no changes in the branch that we are merging into. So- um, I think we should take a break soon. Yes. Like very, very soon. And uh, I am uh, actually uh, done. So uh, I will just uh, end with this uh, summary of the commands that uh, we have uh, learned uh, in this episode. So we have the Git, um, we have learned that uh, Git branch is going to uh, show us the, all the uh, branches um, that, uh, that we have and also uh, highlight the one that uh, we are on. And, and then uh, we can create a new branch using the Git branch uh, and the argument uh, a name in the command, we can uh, switch to a branch by either using a git checkout or a git uh, switch. And we can merge a branch, uh, we can merge two branches together. So always be on the branch that you want to merge into and then merge the one uh, that uh, um, should be merged into, to, uh, into the current one. And uh, one can uh, remove uh, branches by using the dash D or dash capital D options. And uh, the dash D option is always safer because it's only going to merge the ones that, uh, that have, or it's only going to delete the ones that have been merged. But if you really want to merge a, a branch, uh, then you should, uh, even if it's uh, unmerged, then you should use the capital D one. And then uh, there is a, um, uh, also, a, one can use the ch uh, git checkout uh, command together with the dash b option, which is going to both uh, create a uh, new branch and also uh, uh, switch to that uh, branch. So, um, and uh, there is a lot of uh, material left in this lesson. You can uh, take the time to go through it either during the following days or maybe in the following months. It's uh, it's uh, something you can do at your own pace. Yes, let's take a break. Oh, there are many questions on HMD. We will answer in writing, and let's meet back eighteen minutes past the hour. So ten eighteen, so come time. Speaker is here. So um, let's continue now with uh, with the conflict resolution. So what we are going to learn in this part of the lesson is uh, is what are conflicts how we can solve them, and most importantly, how we can actually avoid conflicts. So uh, let's take the guacamole recipe as an example again. And uh, we would like, for example, to, uh, um, to, uh, exper sorry, uh, to experiment uh, uh, on this recipe by uh, either uh, adding lime or, for example, adding uh, onion. Uh, but also changing the amount of uh, cilantro in the recipe at the same time. So the question is, what would happen if we actually try to, uh, to merge uh, these two uh, changes? So uh, um, as we may uh, envision from, uh, from the last uh, 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 part of the lesson is that the, the, the line- Diana, yes? please take control of the screen because we still see the screen of brother one. Sorry for that. Oh, sorry, I should have missed it. It's not my screen, but somebody's screen. But uh, yeah, please take the screen share. Thanks for pointing it out. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it was unexpected. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry for that again. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, let's start with the, uh, we have the, our uh, cilantro recipe, the ingredients in our cilantro recipe, and uh, we may want to experiment a little bit with 
either uh, having lime as well or uh, onions, but also at the same time, uh, just the uh, amount of uh, cilantro in it. And um, if, um, uh, what well, we can envision from, uh, from the last time that uh, the lime and uh, the onion modifications are going to be added automatically by, uh, by git. So there is uh, no conflict there, but the, the conflict sorry, is going to uh, appear when we actually try, when well, Git will try to merge these two versions which have different, uh, different uh, amounts of uh, cilantro. So how we are going to see the following, how we can actually uh, uh, address uh, that uh, issue. So um, I'm going to switch to the terminal now. And uh, I am still in, uh, in uh, this uh, um, uh, local git uh, repo, the recipe directory. So um, I am going to create now two branches. And uh, as uh, the graph before showed, uh, that have different amounts of uh, cilantro. And uh, so uh, let's see which branch I'm on first. Brand, git branch. Yeah, I'm on the master. Uh, branch good. So um, I, um, before doing that, I'm going to quickly remove this quick test branch. I think minus D, right? Oh, instead of minus F. Yeah, sorry. D and F, it's all, it's just uh, close to each other on my keyboard. So uh, git branch like cilantro to be created from the master branch and also one this like cilantro. So now I have, oh, that's me typing wrong. No, it should be. No, it should be all fine. So I have the three branches, the master and the like and dislike uh, cilantro uh, uh, branches. And I'm going to um, um, go uh, switch to my uh, uh, like cilantro branch. So git switch or check out, depending on what you prefer, like cilantro. And then I'm going to edit the ingredients file. And I'm going to say that I want uh, two tablespoons of cilantro in this one. Going to stage the file and commit it. Commit this change. So Diana, there is a Technical question here about uh, about the screen sharing because some participants cannot really see the the last lines of the terminal, but I think it depends how also how they view it. So this will help. The thing that I do uh, as a viewer is that I don't have it in full screen, but I use this uh, view standard mode, so I can I can resize my screens to make it like portrait mode. I don't know whether this was helpful. Maybe we can share some screenshots, but I think this will, this already helps participants. Thank you. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I am going to also uh, make some changes in the dislike cilantro branch. And then I am going to uh, change the amount of cilantro here to half a tablespoon and stage this change and commit.
sorry, that was cool. Um, okay, so now I have uh, uh, these two new branches, the like cilantro and dislike cilantro, which are uh, uh, branching from the master one. And uh, what I am going to uh, uh, do now is to, uh, to merge them back into the master one. So I am going to, uh, sorry, switch to the uh, master one. And uh, let's uh, just hit status here. So yes, I am on the master branch. It's always very important to make sure you are on the right branch before you start, you will try to merge. So uh, I am going to uh, um, first actually show some uh, differences between, uh, between my master one and uh, the cilantro, one, the like cilantro one, which I plan to merge first. So uh, what I can see is that uh, in the like cilantro branch, I have a, a different amount of uh, cilantro compared to my uh, master one. So uh, if uh, I type git merge, like cilantro, what I see is that I, I will, I'm going to get a fast forward merge. Um, and that's uh, the same, uh, uh, so it's the same case as we have seen uh, previously, because the because the like cilantro branch has been uh, built on top of the master one, and there have been no uh, new changes to the uh, master one uh, after the um, after the commit uh, the newest commit in the like cilantro branch. Then uh, uh, what will happen is that simply we are going to have a fast forwarding of the head of the master branch, which is going to point to the, to the commit uh, um, of the, well, now uh, merged master and the like cilantro branch. So uh, if I now uh, try to merge the other branch as well, so still on master, yes. So git merge. It's like uh, cilantro. So uh, then what the uh, git tells me is that the automatic merging has not worked uh, anymore. There is a conflict and, uh, and uh, I should revise basically this file in ingredients uh, txt where the conflict is before I can actually commit uh, the results. So um, let's, uh, um, um, I will just make uh, one comment here. For example, if I, if I have no idea how I can solve the conflict at uh, this point, I uh, could use the git dash dash abort command, which is going to, um, to simply uh, abort this uh, merge. And I'm going to revert to uh, the versions, uh, to the commits that I had before uh, the, the merge, or well, the attempted merge, better say. But I will not abort this. We are going to solve this uh, conflict now. So let's investigate the ingredients file. So during this uh, attempted um, merge, I can see that um, uh, Git has, um, uh, uh, added the contents of both uh, uh, of the modified um, lines in both the master and the dislike uh, cilantro branches. And uh, for solving the, con uh, the conflict, I actually have to, uh, to choose which uh, of these versions I, uh, of the modified files I would like to keep or maybe choose a totally uh, new one. So I am going to, uh, uh, for this exercise, going to uh, keep the one in the in the like cilantro branch. I'm going to save this file. Okay, so.
Okay, and then, uh, uh, so this will tell me that I will branch now this, uh, I will merge this branch, this like cilantro into the master one and uh, I am just going to type a message here. Okay, so now I have uh, um, merged both the like cilantro and this like cilantro uh, branches and uh, also solved this uh, um, conflict between uh, uh, different versions uh, of, um, of the ingredients file. So you can use different tools in order to uh, um, to the to uh, to solve these conflicts, you can also uh, you can also use the visual tools that uh, are are available. You can try that out, uh, for example, at home. That uh, if you want, so you can use the merge tool. You can also uh, um, uh, try to uh, merge these uh, uh, branches using the rebasing. Uh, and then for this, you may actually want to refer to the rebasing material in the previous uh, lesson. And, uh, and uh, I am basically going to, uh, to skip this uh, part and just uh, uh, make some uh, small notes about uh, uh, avoiding conflict. So um, if you are working on your local branch, it's, uh, you can resolve conflicts uh, rather easily, I would say. It's uh, trickier, as we will see in the next part, if you are actually sharing your repository online and you are working with uh, other persons on the same uh, repository. And then it's always good if you actually have a strategy on how uh, uh, you uh, implement changes and you discuss with your collaborators before, uh, before you implement um, um, changes. And then you also have some, um, some uh, guidelines on on uh, uh, what is to be done before merging branches together. So uh, I, uh, I am a little bit over time here, sorry. Um, Radovan, are there some questions maybe in the hack and view which are? Uh... Yes, um, I think we are doing fine with them because uh, so my understanding is that after this, we will go into sharing repositories. Yes. And so I think we're doing well. It was, if this was a bit quick, I also posted, uh, we have a video that we recorded uh, last week on, that is dedicated only on conflict resolution. So it's shared via HackMD and it shows all these tools. I think it's also good to, uh, to, to see that conflicts are a good thing because they, so Git will make sure that we don't accidentally override each other's work if we modify the same portion. So it's a good thing. Um, there are many ways to solve it. Once we decide, uh, we need to inform Git with Git add. And please keep the questions coming on HackMD and we will answer them asynchronously. Um, so indeed, and here I'm relaying a good comment that on HackMD, conflicts really mean that we can do multiple things at once. It can be multiple people working on the same code. It can be me working on several features inside the same code. Um, all right, we will answer questions asynchronously. I recommend that uh, Yuho already gets in position and takes over the screen share. And we will talk about, now we will move on from working only on the laptop to actually sharing repositories online. Okay, can you see my screen? And yes. yeah, sorry, my camera was blocked. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> sorry. So we will continue uh, sharing repositories online. So from the local setting we are moving to online setting. I think you might need to zoom in your terminal. 
Okay, thanks. And maybe oh, it's risk that we will have again the problem with the. So if the bottom of the terminal doesn't, maybe you, if you can move the bottom of the terminals, just a few ticks. Yeah, I think this will be. Okay. Thanks. All right. Good. I will just restart the history there. Yeah. So, hello, uh, I'm Juho, and now we are going through this uh, sharing repositories online. Uh, so we will discuss how to publish our own repositories to some uh, online hosting remote repository hosting service as GitHub, or and then we will also see how we clone a remote repository uh, from a public repository from GitHub, for example, to our own machine and start working with it if we want. And how we see also how, how this version control scales from one user only to multi-user working model. And uh, yes, uh, so far everything's been local and all this now, <clears throat> All this um, machinery that Git actually uses, snapshots, branches, and tags, they are hosted in a, a local directory in our repository. Let's take a, our recipe repository, for example, and let's check what it contains at least for me it contains only these two files and then dot git a directory called dot git and this is the directory that contains uh, all these branches snapshots tags that git needs to to preserve the history of the project it looks like that. And if this .git directory is removed, erased, then we will lose all the history of our project. The actual files of the project, in this case, the, these two ingredients and instruction files, they will remain uh, in their current state, but uh, all the history of the project is lost. And when we are working only locally, we always have to solve the issue of back, backing up our work. If our laptop fails or computer fails, uh, where, where do we have our back, back, backup for the project? And uh, Working online, we will use our remotes. Uh, we, when Git is used to store data on another server, server that server is called remote. And uh, remote repository is repository like a like your local repository. You can think of it as uh, transferring this .git directory to some remote server, approximately. Uh, we can push changes to a remote repository and we can pull for the remote. And we will use, uh, or we might use it as a backup for our work and to collaborate with other people. And there are different types of remotes. Any server that you can connect with SSH can act as a remote server, a remote repository for Git. If it's just plain server uh, to which you have SSH access, then you probably have to set up uh, some Git service into that server to be able to use it. 
but what nowadays uh, is the most common case is to use some existing web service like GitHub, GitLab. They are very popular. Another is closed source, another is open core commercial services. Then there exists uh, similar as Bitbucket or Natabug. And uh, probably many more. Uh, we especially encourage the using our own Nordic research software repository platform that's based on GitLab. And you can see it from this URL. It's uh, free for all researchers <clears throat> and it allows a private and cross university, cross Nordic collaboration. And you can also invite uh, industrial uh, collaborators for your project. If I remember correctly, that should be possible also. And we will use GitHub uh, in this workshop because it's very common and probably sooner or later you will uh, have to uh, interact with GitHub, use it. We are not endorsing GitHub service anyway, uh, but uh, it has nice user interface and it handles uh, many things, many operations there quite nicely. So that's the, the, these are the reasons that we use GitHub. It could be some GitLab also, but we have resorted to GitHub now. And by now you should already have a, a GitHub account. And if not, you can do it, do it now, do it today. Uh, we will, next we will do a type along that, that requires a GitHub account. And tomorrow uh, when we are doing collaborative uh, exercises, we will also need a GitHub account. And if you want, you can of course remove your GitHub account after this workshop. So it's only for this exercises. All right. Let's uh, then next what we will do is uh, we do this kind of type along or click along uh, exercise in which we will create a blank new repository on GitHub. And then we will publish our existing recipe repository to that uh, GitHub remote repository. And after this exercise, you can remove this repository from GitHub. So there will be no traces left there if, if you want. I can also add here that uh, we will give a lot more meaning and context to it tomorrow. So here we, we wanted to be able to share what we did, but tomorrow we will really explain what is happening um, here under the hood. Exactly. Thanks, Radon. Okay. So let's open GitHub. And now please do this as I go along. Uh, I will try to do it uh, slowly enough so that you can follow. I will open this uh, instruction on a different browser. Okay, I already have it here. And we can create a repository, for example, clicking this new button. There's also another options, but this goes well now. Then we will give a name for this new repository. I will name it like this. So, and then some 
description. Guacamole recipe. Yeah, like that. We want it to be public for now. There shouldn't be any reason to it to be private. Uh, we will leave these checkboxes blank because we are importing an existing repository now. Then if you have used GitHub previously and you have some integrations from a third party services or other, they can be shown here. I have this Travis continuous integration service for automated testing, but I don't want to integrate it with this repository now. Then we click create repository. And we will end up a page that looks like this. And here we have a, a web address that we will use now publishing our repository into this remote repository. So now this is completely empty, but it offers us uh, an URL, an address, uh, which we can point our Git at and push our code into this uh, repository so that it, it's not empty anymore soon. And here's uh, two options for connecting. And uh, for now, I suggest that we try everyone to use this SSH uh, connection method. Uh, if you have followed the installation instructions, you should uh, have created SSH keys for using this connection method. So this HTTPS will work for all of you and it can be as our backup now, but because tomorrow we will need these SSH keys, we will try it already now. So if someone still don't have those SSH keys created and set it, then we can uh, solve it, for example, today after the workshop. And as a side note, uh, this HTTPS works always uh, for pulling, so like inspecting, viewing the remote repository. But if we want to push something to this remote repository, uh, in, and in a few months, GitHub will change the functionality such as only SSH will work for pushing. But this is uh, more detailed and you shouldn't care it too much now. If it uh, invokes some questions, you can put them in HackMD. And we will give more details there. But for now, uh, we will copy this. And then there are our instructions below how we can actually publish. And now we will uh, change for our terminal. And we want to check that we are in our recipe repository. Uh, looking good. Yes. I'm in a correct directory and it's a, a git managed repository. Then we will uh, add a remote address for this repository like this. And we will call it origin. So we will name it origin. This is a, a common uh, habit with git and then we will give it as a last parameter this 
repository address. And then we will. Uh, you are sorry for interrupting. Yeah. If you have the possibility to, so the left part of, of the terminal, like the left, the most left character is a bit cut. So if, All right. if you have the possibility to move it a bit yes. to the right. Oh yeah, better, thanks. Great, thanks for noting. Yeah. Okay, the next uh, line in the instructions, we'll go back to the exercise instructions. We are now here in the instructions. The next line is to rename our current branch to main. And we do that because um, the default branch on GitHub is main. Yeah. And I've already done that uh, accidentally, kind of. So my branch is called already a main that I'm at. Then we actually do the pushing of the content of our repository to GitHub. And again, we will, we will tomorrow explain what, what is really happening here when we do git push and yes. why this command looks like, like it looks. So now we just take the command as, as granted and uh, explore a little bit what, what it looks like in the GitHub side. So Previously, the repository main page, this code tab here looked like this because this was empty. Now if we refresh this page, it will show our uh, content of, of the repository. All right, and then Let's try also it another way around. Let's try to download or clone our repository uh, from GitHub to our own machine. And now we have to move out of this repository so that we don't end up having repositories inside repositories. That's more advanced not covered now. And then from this exercise instruction, we use this kind of uh, command line command. We will copy the address part from here again, now it's uh, behind this green button here. It has three different connection modes. We, we still use the SSH. And write git clone, insert the address, and then we will rename this because now it would actually, I don't actually would need to do that, but I will rename it anyway because the instruction exercise also renames. I rename it my recipe and this uh, year number there. If I would leave this last portion out, it would rename it as, as it's renamed in uh, or named in GitHub. And now if I look the content of my directory, I have this original recipe and then exactly same rep repository, but cloned to a different directory. I will 
now remove this so that I don't mix it up later. All right. So I can add here, oh, just reading the HackMD that this is quick. And uh, but on the plus side, we will explain it tomorrow. We are following the steps here literally, so you can also try it later. And it's not a problem for the rest of today if this didn't work, because after the break, we will we will use it. So we, we, we will not use this repository. We will call a different repository. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, main things, a repository can have a multiple remotes. Now we only created once. Uh, and local branches, local repositories often track uh, remote ones. Uh, yeah, but as Rodovan said, this will clear tomorrow and next week also. And what we will do after the break, we will do the cloning. Maybe we can uh, just explain that again. So when we clone a repository, we copy the repository to our laptops with all commits, all branches, all history. And one question that came up, which was a bit quick. So if I want to know the address from where to clone from, like git clone, and then there is the address, where do I find it? Can you show that again and how you found the URL? Sure. So we are now in the, like a front page or main page of a typical GitHub repository. And it's uh, behind this green button. It reads code for some reason. I don't know if it's clear or not, but here is this uh, address that you can copy and paste. Uh, and we preferred uh, this SSH address. And then did it like this pasted the address here and that will clone it to, to my computer. What if I try to do this and there is already a folder called recipe 2021? Good question. In that case, uh, add a name. In, in the as a last parameter here, and it will create a directory. In my case, my old recipe uh, directory where it clones it. So I will end up like having named like this. Super. Do you want to show more? Should we take a break soon? Let's take a break now and continue with inspecting history after the break. Yes, so we will have a super fun episode and exercise after the break. Also, once we will go into inspecting history. Uh, so during the next 45 minutes, we will see uh, and learn how to find exactly the exact line of code that we want to find and uh, how we can also navigate in the history of our code. And then we will learn how we can find a commit that broke. Uh, or change the functionality of our code somehow. And uh, mm, as a for preparation for the exercises, coming exercises, you should not be in any Git repository. So if you are, for example, in recipe, 
repository uh, you have to come out of the directory uh, but first uh, I will demonstrate a couple of different git commands for exploring uh, like the code finding expressions or strings from the code and then examining the dates and committer information of the code but as a warm-up uh, we will check uh, briefly a very nice uh, visual tool for for browsing through the history of any repository actually at least uh, in any repository in github uh, correct me if this is applicable also for other services but it's a git history browser software called git history browser and in this warm-up we will examine a repository called network x uh, that is python library for network analysis but uh, that's irrelevant here we just take it as a big pile of code and now we will see uh, the readme file of this repository so this is the usual file that is shown in the um, main in github page of any repository and now with left and right arrow keys in your keyboard you can uh, see how this readme file has changed in history so we go back commit by commit and this very nice tool visualizes the exact lines that uh, are added or removed or changed like so and you can use this on at least on any github repository including your own repositories and and examining repository file by file but next uh, back to the terminal to command line i will again put terminal in the view and check the uh, exercise from a different browser window and uh, now you don't have to type anything just play back relax and, and try to uh, try to just you can just follow which uh, command line commands I'm using you will get to try these command line commands in a couple of minutes but now a uh, short demonstration all right I'm not in any repository so uh, as here in instructions I will first clone uh, our repository with lots of code. Like this. Then we go into the repository. And first, we will use a command called git grep. If you have used Linux grep, the basic tool of Linux, that's this is very similar to it. We can find, we can uh, search for any string or line of code from the repository. Dash i is ignoring case.
And here in the results, we see that this repository has a, a bunch of files, including this kind of uh, string, fix me. The next uh, tool is git log dash capital S. Uh, I will copy the string that we are looking for. This git log capital S uh, will search as, as the previous git grep command, it searches the current uh, status of the repository, the current state. So the the code code files as they are, but this git log capital dash capital S will search through uh, all the repository uh, history of all commits. And it will look into these commits and if this string was removed or introduced into the code base, then it will show those commits as a result. Now we see that it found two commits that might either have uh, been introduced this line or removed this line from our code base. So it might be that this string doesn't exist in our code base anymore, but because we have all our project history, we can uh, look into the history and find it there. The third command is git show that we already have seen. And with it, we can uh, look more into detail into this. These commits. It suffices to copy and paste the beginning of, of commit hash. And then we'll give it to this git show command. And as previously, it shows us the content of this commit. And in this view, we can use this uh, What's the name of the character? Like uh, slash, yeah, not backslash, but slash character. And then we can write here the string that we were after. And it will show that, okay, actually in this commit, uh, some function that has the string in the name was removed. And with Q, we get our command line back. So this, as usually the git log command takes your command line and goes into the pager mode where you can uh, browse through the log and on character Q uh, exits that mode and you get your command line terminal back. And the third or fourth command is git annotate, which will uh, show when was some change in the code made, who made it, and shows us also a commit message or actually let's see what it shows. Did I promise too much or or not? So git annotate and the name of the file. Okay, too much copy pasting, sorry about that. So
it opens uh, a view like this, which we can all again browse with up and down arrow keys. And here are the line numbers. And here are the actual code lines. So the actual code is here, not very readable at this terminal size. But as first uh, column, it shows a hash of the commit. The last commit that changed this line. Uh, who did the change? When was the change made? Can we try this... to look at this also on, on GitHub? Yes. I don't want to upset the, the, the stream too much here, but the. Um, Let's if... check it also from the more uh, visually, maybe placing. Yeah, so, so if the repository open. Let's go into this. So it's repository. under net, network X folder. Yes. Let's open the same file and then convert matrix.py. Oh, yeah, thanks. And then, then the button called blame, which is really not a good name, but it's the same functionality. Yeah, now I click it a little bit fast. But this is the GitHub's view on this uh, same information. And I will show again where it was here. So this blame button here for, for any individual file. Yeah, and it's really not to blame anybody, um, but super useful if you find a bug in a code and you want to know how long was the bug around. Was it introduced before the publication or after? And imagine how you would answer that question without without Git. All right, let's continue. Um, there's some food for thoughts, how these annotations would be affected, wrapping lines, or using some auto-formatting auto tools for your code. You can, for example, put in HackMD thoughts if you have about this, but uh, we will skip that uh, now. We will move forward. Uh, next, next one will be a brief demonstration how to inspect code in the past. So we want to, we are now in this network X repository. And we want to check how it looked uh, some commits ago. And we have uh, some hash here offered. Let's copy a unique first part of the hash. And we will use this newer version of, I will try to teach myself to use these new Git commands that are more descriptive, like this exercise probably would need some uh, updating. Here's the old way of doing it. I will use this git switch command instead of git checkout command. Uh, with uh, switch dash dash create, it will create a new branch back in the history. So this can be thought about as like a time capsule or time machine, this, this uh, branch back in history, like a stable food steppings that we can stand on to inspect the code back in some Okay, that wasn't there. I'm back in some uh, commit, some commit back in history. We give the hash of the commit. And now we are in
back in history at some point of time. How so we, we can see how, that. How can we verify that, that we are really back in the history? So you have uh, to double check that. Yeah, well, the first hint is that the content of the directory is, is a little bit different. So something has changed. But uh, git log would give us uh, some hints. So the it will always show the newest commit in the first. And now we see that the newest commit is from 2016. So, and then back, back on from that. Does that suffice as a proof that we are now actually time traveled a little bit? Okay. And then when we are done, we can check out back to main. So we come back to this moment of time, the present time. And you then we can use uh, switch, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, no. Just <laughs> Yeah, it's reflex. Yep. Uh, and then we can delete the old branch that we used as a, our time capsule. Mm -hmm. What was the name of my? Older coder, okay, some typo in there, so that is the reason. And now that was this um, commands. Next, uh, we have still like so 20, maybe, sorry, eight uh, minutes time. Sorry for interrupting. Maybe before we go into the exercise, I want to lift one question that I think many people might have. So if you scroll up again, before just when you did the uh, in check out to inspect code in the past. So what we did here, we created a branch pointing pointing at the hash. We could have also uh, directly done git checkout some hash. So this would also have worked. It we, it would also bring us back to the past. But uh, we we demonstrate the way of creating a branch because it's it's good to then attach a label to that place. And the other advantage is that if I want to then make some commits in the past, uh, I will still find them because they will still be findable through that new branch. And still, since branches are cheap, they are they don't cost any space on my hard drive. This is, I think, the safer way of working with it. Hopefully that answered the question. And now let's move on to uh, explain the exercise. Yes. So. Uh, next exercise uh, will be done in breakout rooms. Um, uh, and in this exercise, uh, we should clone uh, uh, Arvest, uh, repository called Arvest with this cloning command here. So it's a little bit different from the usual cloning command because we want to clone a certain uh, branch or I think it's tag, but it's similar. So we want to clone it, not the current status of this harvest repository, but we want to clone its status as it was in a branch called v0.3.5. So that's why we have this branch command and this argument here but otherwise it's quite normal cloning it will give you a notification about detached head uh, but you can ignore that notification now you can just move into this repository directory and then uh, as initial step create a branch called exercises as as is instructed here and that that is the point where you start 
this exercise. After that, uh, we will try to use these five tools to do these five uh, tasks. So finding guide code, line of code containing this uh, expression here, finding out when the line was modified, and finding out the hash of the actual commit, which modified that line. The line should not be removed. So the rest of this point two uh, is only for a backup. And then we should inspect the commit with git show. And then in step four, we create a branch pointing to the past as I demonstrated uh, just a minute ago. And then there is a question, how would you bring the code to the commit precisely before that line that was modified? So that you can try to solve in the breakout rooms. Any questions about the actual exercise and how it should go? We will try to answer all the questions yes. in, in the HackMD, but now... Uh, so I, I have a question about... This. So the goal is to do these five steps. I think this is a very interesting and important exercise, so we want to give it time. We have, in our initial plan, we have allocated 45 minutes for the exercise. My recommendation is that we start with 25 or 30 minutes and we see how it goes so that we have still some time to wrap up after this exercise. I think it should, 30 minutes should be really good. Uh, actually, this, there was this uh, bisect exercise that is like, uh, yeah. I think it's counted in uh, this 45 minutes. So I think that this shouldn't take 30 minutes doing this through five step. Okay, uh, so then I recommend let's take 20. Yeah. 20 minutes for this exercise. If you, if this goes quickly and you want to do more, you can try out the bit bisect exercise, which is optional. Exactly. And then we would be back at um, at twelve o'clock, Stockholm time, thirteen Helsinki time for to to wrap up the session. Did I understand that right? Just checking whether any. Um, about the video turning on and off, I think we have we will now try to not turn it off for you all the time. But please remember then when you come back to to turn it off. But still, if you need help, let us know. We will help as quickly as possible. Also, give us a status from the rooms so that we know how the time allocation is going. And I will now open the rooms, and we have twenty minutes time. Have fun. I could, I will go now through this exercise for Twitch viewers. So let's start. I'm a lot of the network X the demonstration repository. And I check that I'm not in any repository currently, looking good. Then let's start this exercise with cloning the repository that we are going to examine. And then there is this notification about the detached head state, but we will 
not go into details of this. We don't have to care about it now. Let's go into the repository, harvest, and then with git status, we actually see the same notification. Or similar, not currently any branch. Let git branch. Uh, we see the same again, a little bit differently. But as in the instructions, we create a branch. We could do this exercise without creating this uh, branch also. But then if we want to make any commits, those commits are not saved in this Lidatch head state. OK, typo there. This should be check out and switch dash b new branch <laughs> looks good okay now we should find line with contains uh, this and for that i will first type, try git grep And let's put this dash i also in the beginning uh, for ignoring the case of the characters. And we got a result that in directory r, in file session dot r, this line that contains this expression. Next, we should find out when this line was last modified and uh, for that I would use git annotate because that will show uh, line by line when it was modified who modified it And then the name of the file here. And now we only have to find the line, line of code that we were after. I will again copy it from here. I'm not sure if there was a single command that would give the answer, but this is, I think this works also. Now we are with the slash in this uh, line viewing mode, we can search for from this file. And we got a, we find the line and then we can see that here is its timestamp. It was uh, last modified in the last day of 2014. What else we was supposed to? And here we want to keep track of the hash. We want to remember that. Yes, hash. okay, yeah. thanks. So I will copy this hash. And now we want to find actual commit, which modified the line. Well, the commit hash is already here in the beginning. So I will copy that to clipboard. 
And in the, this third step, we inspect that commit with git show. So here we need Q to get our terminal back, command line back, and then we paste the hash for git show. And we will see the commit that contains modifications to several files. Mm. We could still verify that this modification actually is visible here, just to make it really clear. And with slash and pasting the expression there, yes, it's, it's here. Okay, then <clears throat> we was asked to create a branching pointing to the past when the commit was created to be able to browse, browse and, and use code as was back then. So we want to go back in time to uh, when this commit was made. And for that, we use this git switch Uh, with uh, switch create and then uh, now I have to look which way around was the branch name first and then the hash <clears throat> mm. uh, let's uh, call it uh, our time machine of this is not too confusing name and then all right now i lost the hash of the commit but it's here i will copy it from there and now we are we should be back in time the moment when this uh, line of code was introduced to, to our code base. We can check it, for example, looking the actual file. It was, uh, I will use the less. Then it was session. Uh, and now uh, wrong shortcut keys, just control C is enough. Okay, and there it is. Uh and a better way to verify that we are actually that in that point of time would be using git log which shows us the hash of the commit and then the timestamp which should be on the day of 2014 and then we have still a couple of minutes probably to go the last step was how can you bring the code to the commit precisely before that line was modified. So, yes. Uh, to commit precisely before that line. So uh, one commit back from this commit when this line was modified. This is how I understand this. Yes, so the goal was to bring the code to the state just before. So if let's imagine what we found was a problem and we want to have the yeah. code just, 
just before that change. Yeah, so the previous change is this previous commit. And let's go into that. So we have five minutes to go. And now let's switch to the more back in time. Mm, I could do this without create, uh, but uh, if we want to make some comments, it's better to do this kind of temporary branch into that time point. And I will name this as a uh, one before very bad name, probably, if you have better suggestions. No, one before no links because this uh, grabbing line con started with no links. So that will that will have to do it now. Then again, the hash of the previous commit. And this way, the latest commit should be this ordered by Hadley commenting add missing session method. Yes. All right. Still a couple of minutes to go. Let's check the solution. Was it somehow different? Uh, okay, just before the naming was interesting because it's hard sometimes or often the naming things is is quite difficult and quite important also all right but yeah and then actually here we can see a good example of alternative way to go just one commit back so the syntax is to add this uh, tilde or what the name of the character and one, and this is this means uh, one commit before this commit. Okay, I will demonstrate that also. So, the, and now I will go even one commit back in time. So let's take this uh, previous to where we are now. Okay. Create. Um, let's call it to before. Maybe not so good naming here, but maybe not the worst either. And actually, now I'm doing this the same similarly as before, where I should try the different method. So we are copying the current hash of the comment where we are now. And then we add this tilde one in the end, meaning the previous comment to this. Yeah, you could also do tilde two, tilde three of the previous one, then you get the grandparent and etc. I will now close the rooms, which means that our people will be back in one minute because I think rooms, uh, exercise groups are done. All right, thanks. So welcome back, everyone. Um, hopefully you got some results for the exercise.
Uh, next, let's summarize today uh, and uh, quickly I'll share a little bit what will be tomorrow on the agenda. And then it's time also for some questions if you have. And we can try to answer the questions. So one question that comes up is step five in the exercise. What was that again? Um, step five. Yes. Yeah, how to bring your code to the commit precisely before. And maybe also why, why, why do we ask that even? So the motivation was here. We found we found a commit that changed something. And you may want to now try out how was the code right before the change. Let's imagine the change broke something. So that was the motivation. And maybe we can sh we, we showed that on stream and, and it's in the recording, but maybe we can show that one step or explain that. Mm. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, did you want me to uh, show it again? Yes, or we can unroll the solution and it's in there and we can discuss it. Yes, let's check first here. So this assumes that we, let's, this assumes that we found out the commit in step two or three, and now we know that the commit is five BBEB, et cetera. <laughs> and this tilde one, so at the end of step five, with hash tilde one, we can refer to the parent of the commit. And if we would use tilde two, it will be the grandparent. So we can here refer to the commit just before that change. And this can be useful if you then want to bring your repository to the situation, how it was just before that one possibly pro problematic change. I hope that clarified the question. I'm just checking whether anything else needs to be raised. Okay. Um, We can, I think we have a bit of time. We can maybe at least explain when git bisect can be a useful tool. So we, we will not we will not really demonstrate it here because it's the steps are listed down there. But maybe we can mention when this can be a good tool to to use. Yes. So git bisect is a uh... Uh, tool, uh, git tool that uh, it is like a little bit similar or serves a similar purpose like uh, git grep or git log dash capital S or um, if you if we have a code that is not working anymore as we expect it should work and uh, we just realized it and many, many commits uh, have been made after it possibly uh, uh, started behaving unexpectedly. So we know that um, there's a commit that breaks things uh, somewhere in history and the history can be like 500 commits long. So from long time of, of uh, coding the project, but we don't know which, uh, where in those 500 commits, the commit that uh, breaks our code is. And uh, how would we, or maybe be, before that, why would we want to find the actual uh, commit and one reason could be that uh, we have no idea where in the code the 
error is, where the bug is. So if it's a complex code, calculating something, solving something, and, uh, and when we run the code, it gives us uh, a wrong results that we can somehow verify as a wrong result. Uh, but we have no idea where the actual error in the code is. So uh, finding the commit that introduces this uh, error is, is a good start, could be a good start to start uh, debugging the code and, and try to find the actual line of code or lines of code that, that breaks, breaks our code. And that's the reason why it could be useful to, to know the exact commit that breaks our code. To be able to uh, find, find the actual breaking lines. Yes, so this is not something we like do every day, but I don't know, twice a year I use this to, to locate the commit. And often when we see the commit, then I can actually look at it. Now we know how, git show. And once you see the change, it maybe you immediately see what the problem is. Maybe not, but, um, and even if it, 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 even if it doesn't help us to fix it, at least we know exactly from when it existed. Again, super good for reproducibility to know from when precisely did we have this problem. Yes. Uh... So the tool for finding that exact commit is git bisect. And um, how the bisect works, uh, this question or food for dirt here is uh, trying to induce the ideas how, how to solve this finding specific breaking commit among the 500, history of 500 commits. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't have a good analogy. I had it, but I, I don't remember it now. The good analogy, uh, what we are actually doing or the, what the Git bisect actually does. Uh, but uh, in, in Git Bisect's own terms, um, we have a, a stretch of 500 commits. And we know that somewhere here it breaks. We know that currently it doesn't work anymore if we run our code. And it gives us an output that is faulty and then we know that uh, maybe the first commit of this 500 commit history was was still good and we can go now we know we, how to go to back in time uh, with git commands we can go into that command uh, sorry in that into that point of history into that uh, commit and run our code there and verify that, okay, the results are actually good there. So it's between the present point in time and the initial point. If we number them from one to 500, one is good and 500 is, is a bad commit. And then we can just guess and take the middle point, uh, move uh, to that commit and run our code there and see whether the result is uh, correct or, or incorrect. And if it's again correct, so we know that between initial point and this halfway step, the code is good. So the error must be somewhere between 
our present state and this halfway step. And we repeat this halving of this uh, history and run our code in each uh, point in time to see whether the code uh, produces correct or incorrect results. And this is what the bisect uh, will actually do. Here are the how, how to use this uh, bisect command. Uh, we give it a command, uh, subcommand start, and then designate the good point and then a bad point, which can be also the name of the branch, like here. Uh, but uh, I don't know, maybe this will be enough because yeah. it's a bit called clumsy to just to try to explain. Yeah, I think, so this is something that you can also check out later. <clears throat> it's not something we need every day. Um, question to you, how did you want to show some more? Should we start wrapping I, up? Uh, we can start wrapping up. It's all yeah. for today. So what I wanted to only point people to that it exists and it's maybe a good summary. If you scroll up the page and you click on uh, like all the way up and you click on the, just to get the lesson overview on Git introduction, so on top left. And scroll a bit down, there are a couple of episodes, many we didn't do because we chose not to. So some are, some are optional, but I want to show you, point you to one and which is the last one the practical advice. And that is that, well, we showed many things and staging area and branches, but I think it's good to read through this. What is a good starting point for, you know, single person projects. And I think it's okay if you start working with Git to work on one branch, make many commits. Later, you can then start working on multiple branches. As soon as you start collaborating with others, in fact, you have to use branches. So tomorrow we will use branches. That's why we introduce them. We will also give more context to these when we cloned and when we pushed and when we pull, we will explain what is going on. And tomorrow we will really move on from working alone on our laptop. We will move on to collaborate, collaborating and we will discuss a couple of models for collaboration. We will demonstrate it with GitHub, but the same, the same principles work also on GitLab, Bitbucket, etc.